praise God, this is Dr. Joe Van Koering, and you do not want to go anywhere for the next 30 minutes. We're bringing you a special God's News broadcast. In fact, we're going to just quickly, in just a moment or two, go to the excerpts of the message that I just preached just days ago in Louisville, Kentucky. But listen, this is, this is news hot off the press. Literally, the day I'm filming this, yesterday, are you listening to me? Yesterday, four Jewish rabbis were slaughtered in the synagogue as they were praying in Jerusalem. Uh, they, these devils came in with axes and knives. They were shouting, Allo Akbar, and they began attacking worshipers, stabbing them, uh, and, then, and then opened fire. Listen, one of the worshipers came out full of blood, he said. There was a massacre. There were people running from the synagogue, a man sitting on the pavement covered in blood. It looked like he, was, he had been stabbed. Two people came out with their faces half missing. I know that's... That's so horrible. But see, that's the part of the news that they're not telling you. They're going to say, oh, he was armed with guns and they shot these two guys. Yeah, they were, but they came in originally with axes and knives and literally they were attacked in this manner. Folks, this was yesterday, yesterday. I don't know any other television program that has sounded this alarm any more and any harder than this one. It is time to stop the political correctness. It is time to stop the voices of all of these uh, worried about Islamophobia and all this kind of nonsense and realize the enemy that we're dealing with. Folks, this is the end time spirit. This is none other. Islam is the end time spirit, the spirit of Antichrist. Now, I just preached in Louisville, Kentucky on the global caliphate and the, the Islamic jihad threats against Christianity and against the West. Now you say it'll never come to America. Listen to me. Last Friday, that's it, Friday, when I'm filming this, just three days ago, the U.S. House of Representatives bows to Allah as Muslim imam delivers prayer. There's a picture right there of this imam in the Congress praying in our, in our, in, in our United States Senate. Friday, was a Muslim day in Washington, D.C. We have no idea why or how, but Muslims, imams, and prayers were everywhere invading the Christian National Cathedral and the floor of Congress. This guy that prayed, he is actually linked to the Muslim Brotherhood, this imam, and of course it's a bunch of nonsense that they want us to, you know, the Kool-Aid they want us to drink. Forgive me, but I'm just, I'm just irate this morning. They opened prayer to the day of business in the house from Ahmed Chelbi delivered an Islamic prayer praising Allah from the house floor. And then, of course, the same day, there was a prayer meeting, really a Chrislam meeting, if you want to know the truth, because these, these uh, overzealous so-called liberal Christians that just want to go arm in arm with the Muslims because you know, we really do worship the same God. We do not. That is nonsense. That is lies from the pit of hell. And of course, right here in Washington, D.C., at our national cathedral, in other words, the church that, that, that is right in the heart of, of Washington, D.C., this is where, you know, when presidents die, this is, this is where they go to have their funerals. Right after 9-11 when we saw George Bush and, and Billy Graham in the, in the moving ceremony and service right after 9-11, it was done at the same church. Well, guess what? Now the, the imams are welcome and the Muslims are welcome. And we had to have a special service so that we could get along as Christians and, and, and Islam. Listen, folks. I'm going to take you right now to a few brief excerpts. I don't have time today to give you the whole message. The whole message is probably 90 minutes long. We're going to try to give you some excerpts this week and maybe next week. Just a few excerpts of what I just preached. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you how I can put this ministry tool in your hands. Don't go anywhere. This is me preaching from Louisville, Kentucky at the recent International Prophecy Conference just a few days ago on the global caliphate and the threat of Islamic Jihad against Christianity and the West. I don't know how to be politically correct. I don't know how to play the political game. Either this book is true or it's not. Either we are going to live by it and believe every word of it, or we might as well throw it on the trash heap and live any old way. 
But you and I know that we are living in the most critical hour in the history of mankind. It's time, I believe, to cast aside the deception, cast aside the political correctness, cast aside the things that are destroying us. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for the truth. I'm tired of being lied to. I'm tired of the media trying to deceive us. I'm tired of people telling me that Allah is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm tired of what I see coming to this nation. And tonight I want to talk about the global caliphate that is a threat to America and the church in America. I invite you, I'm going to use this as my launching pad. Turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3, please. When you read Jesus' letters to the seven churches, you find that he rebuked them most often for moral compromise. For example, to Pergamum, here in chapter 2, down in verse 16, it says they tolerated the Nicolaitans, who, con who, who condone this immorality. I don't have time to get into all of it. But notice what he says in verse 16. He says, repent, or else I'll come unto thee quickly, and I'll fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Imagine Jesus coming with a sword to fight against his own disobedient people in the church. But that's what he's saying. And then if you go to Thyatira, it says a little further down, you see this again when in verse 22 he, he says, Behold, um, I will cast them out, cast her out. He's speaking of Jezebel. They tolerated Jezebel in the house of God. And he says, I'll cast her into her bed and them that commit adultery with her. I'll strike her children dead, and then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. This tells us the lengths to which Jesus is willing to go to discipline an impure church. As far as Jesus is concerned, when a church tolerates immorality... He says it's ready for severe judgment. Now why? Because moral compromise weakens a church's ability to withstand the pressures of society and false doctrine. One of the reasons we don't have pulpits that confront the rampant false doctrine in America today is because we have pulpits filled with those who are themselves privately compromising to immorality. It seems that perhaps this church is the most instructive on the matter of morality because Jesus says to them in the very first verse of chapter 3, verse 1, he says to the angel of the church of Sardis, write these things, saith he, that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, but thou, that thou livest, but thou art what? Dead. Dead. Imagine. On the surface, this church gave the appearance of being healthy. But Jesus applied his stethoscope spiritually to that church in Sardis. And he said, despite all the outward signs, this church is a corpse. You're dead. Now, if you ever have had occasion to go to Sardis, you'll find the ruins of an ancient 4th century church and it's literally built right against a massive pagan temple. <laughs> now, I realize these didn't stand there, you know, in the first century or maybe in the, they probably arrived in about the fourth century. But you ask, why in the world would this church be right, built right next to a pagan temple? And, you know, we can interpret that one of two ways. We can say, well, wow, these Christians were so strong. We want to build our church right next to where Satan dwells. And we want to shine a light on the moral, moral and spiritual darkness around us. We want to go evangelize those pagans. And, and I wish that was the case, but I don't think that's the truth. Because I believe the church felt so at home next to a pagan temple. 
that they had no trouble building their church right next to it. Are you listening to me tonight? And Jesus went on to say in verse 4, Revelation 3, verse 4, Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Evidently, the majority of the church had soiled their garments, but there was still a lingering remnant. And sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to the remnant. Hey, we got some remnant bunch here tonight. I believe we do. Now, quickly, secondly, well, this compromise, I believe, has absolutely infested the church in America. I ask you, what is the spiritual state of the American church today? I don't believe there's any doubt that we have been weakened by our compromise, especially by the inroads of sexual immorality, even in our churches. I believe we are yielding ourselves and compromising with regard to the values that nibble away at our single-minded commitment to Jesus Christ. We say we want to be faithful to Christ, but cannot find the strength to do so. Now, secondly, or really, lastly, I want to get to the church in Laodicea quickly. The last one that's given because here we see the compromise of consumerism. And I've taught much on Laodicea in the past, and I want to just take a few brief moments. Specifically, Jesus says, look at verse 17, Revelation 3, 17. Look at what he says. He says, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not thou that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked? Because Laodicea was located near a number of important trade routes, it was a very prosperous city. So even the people became wealthy. They became wealthy primarily, we've, told, we've learned, through trading cloth and garments and carpets. And the citizens became wealthy at trading these items. And when Jesus says, you say, I'm rich and I don't have need of anything. But see, Jesus looked at him and saw differently. He looked at him and he said, you're wretched and you're blind and you're pitiful. You may not know it, but in Laodicea, there was a temple of Ascalapius, this Greek god of medicine and healing. And the residents in Laodicea literally took pride in manufacturing these healing bombs. It was a powdery salve, and it was sold around the known world to fix sore, weak eyes. Isn't that amazing? Look at the parallel. Despite the fact that they boasted of having good eyesight, Jesus said, you're spiritually blind. And I think about the church today in America. We sell this message of see the light, but yet we are so blind to our own ills and the effects of compromise. But the height of hypocrisy was that Jesus himself was knocking on the door of his church. How far have we gone in America to perhaps have the Lord of the church not even in the church, but knocking on the door of our hearts saying, will you let me in? How blind do we have to get to get to that point? Thirdly and lastly, before I move forward is the third compromise and it's the compromise are you ready for this not just of moral decadence and not just of consumerism but it's a compromise of a weakened gospel we have a gospel that is proclaimed today it's not the gospel forgive me folks but it's not the gospel 
Well, we preach the gospel, and we, if you say this five-second prayer with me, we believe you got born again. Folks, if you never heard about the blood, and you never heard about the cross, and you never even heard the name of Jesus, tell me how you can believe in the gospel. It was never even proclaimed. I got you good on that. I got you good and silent on that one, didn't I? There's a thing out there called Chrislam. And if you aren't aware of it, it's an attempt to bring Islam into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is being proclaimed today through Chrislam is you don't need to lose your faith in Allah and Muhammad and the Quran. Because after all, Jesus is in the Quran, and we love Jesus just like Christians do. We worship Jesus just like Christians do. It's called the Yale document. And just basically about two years or so ago, they decided to, to release this reconciliation program. And I won't read all of this, but real quickly, the goal of the reconciliation program is to promote reconciliation between Muslims and Christians and between Muslim-majority nations and the West and drawing on the resources of the Abrahamic faiths and the teachings of the person of Jesus Christ. What do we want to do? We want to bring together Muslim, Christian, and Jewish leaders. Our goal is religious peace, world peace. Sound like the tribulation, folks? You realize there's a false religion coming in the tribulation period that will unite all religions of the world. You do know that, right? You do know that. You have been told that, right? Folks, we're seeing it before our eyes. And we ask forgiveness. Here's Christians asking Muslims for forgiveness. How we have treated Muslims. God help us. Political correctness is killing us. We want world peace. I can't read all this. I don't have time because i got so much more to give you. Without peace and justice between these two religions and communities, listen to this, we can never have meaningful peace in the world. They know it. They know it. The future of the world depends on peace between Muslims and Christians. You say, big deal. That's nobody I know. Folks, there's 24 pages, Bob, there's 24 pages, tiny words, front and back, front and back, of all the preachers that have already signed this document. Oh, I've never heard of any of them. You probably got their books on your shelf at your house right now, and you don't even know it. There's this group called the Insider Movement. Anybody heard of the Insider Movement? It teaches it's possible to be a Christian and remain a Muslim at the same time. The proponents claim that Muhammad was the prophet from God. The Quran is, the, is at least partially inspired scripture. And it's possible for Muslims to retain their Muslim identity and be followers of Christ. After all, we have common ground between Jesus of the Quran and Jesus of the New Testament. Muslims are told they can follow Christ without abandoning their religion. I want to tell you what that is. That is heresy at the highest level. Period. Amen. If you're going to do it, do it. Amen. Amen. It's impossible for a person to receive Christ as Savior and yet remain a Muslim. Islam explicitly denies the deity of Jesus Christ, denies his crucifixion, that he alone is the way to salvation. Christianity teaches that salvation is possible only because of Christ's deity and his crucifixion. At the core, the two belief systems cannot find common ground. They are at complete odds of one another. Here's a quote from Soren Kern of the Gatstone Institute. Here's the quote. As Islam replaces Christianity as the dominant religion in Europe, notice, as Islam replaces Christianity, you don't think it'd ever come to America, but that's why I'm preaching this to you tonight. So you can understand the threat is in America as well. 
But let me document some things that are going on in Europe first. As Islam replaces Christianity as the dominant religion in Europe, more and more churches are set to become mosques, which increasingly serve not only as religious institutions, but also function as the foundational political building blocks for the establishment of separate parallel Muslim communities in Europe that are based on, here it is, Islamic Sharia law. I'm going to talk about that a little bit from their words, not mine, but their words. Bear with me. You know, some Christians <laughs> will not wake up until the church. They go to church and realize there's a sign on the church door that says, this church is officially closed. That was recently said by the leader, by the way, of the National Religious Broadcasters. And he was, of course, referring to the strong, growing anti-Christian bias that is moving rapidly in America. But I had to think when I heard him say that, although that is happening there's another explanation, and it simply is, we may, not here now, but I mean some in America may decide to go to church on a Sunday and realize there's a big sign saying this church is closed because it's about to turn into a mosque. And that may seem far-fetched to you in a very unlikely scenario. In Europe, it's not. I know I get passionate about these things, but folks, I believe them with all of my heart. And I wish there were more ministers on television that had the courage to say some of these things. Thank God there are some. There are a handful of men of God, I can name them and you could too, that have stood against this Chrislam, this, this spirit of Islam that's invading the church in America. And, and, and the sad reality is, is, is if you take a stand on these things, there's repercussions. And the very preachers that should be proclaiming the truth are afraid of Islam or afraid. Listen, I've all had so many death threats on me already. I don't care. Do me a favor and send me to heaven. Listen, I refuse to get on television and just, and just put some kind of milk toast padlum message. If you can't handle the truth and you can't handle <laughs> God's news behind the news because we are going to give it to you with both barrels. Now, I better calm down. If my wife was here right now, she'd say, Joe, calm down. Listen, this is the brand new DVD set from the International Prophecy Conference, not here in Florida, but what we just did just a matter of days ago in Louisville, Kentucky, at the great church there, Pastor Bob Rogers, my dear friend. We had Donald Perkins preaching. We had me doing this message and then another message coming up that we're going to give you an excerpt of in the future where I deal with Pope Francis. But then we had none other than my dearest friend, best-selling author, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Now, you're already familiar with his Harbinger book because it was the bestseller for two straight years on New York Times bestseller list. And, of course, Jonathan has been with us at our conferences. Well, Jonathan was with us again just days ago in Louisville, Kentucky, and this is his brand-new best-selling book on the Shemitah, the mystery of the Shemitah. Now, we have offered the Harbinger in the past, and we, we still can. If you still want the Harbinger and you don't have the Harbinger, you can go online and, and receive that. But I want to put this book in everyone's hands. Now, this book is for a gift of $25 to the ministry. Folks, the information in this book is unbelievable. I'm going to share a, a line or two with you next week as I give you excerpts from his message because Jonathan taught on the mystery of the Shemitah at the conference. So we're going to give you a few select highlights and I'm going to come back to this book. This is for a $25 gift, but listen to me. If you will order right now, today, this week, within the next few days, if you will go online or you will go and call me, our number is on the screen right now, or write me and the address is on the screen right now and with your $60 gift, the book... $25, we'll send it to you. And we really need your help right now. But here's what I'm going to do. If you will order this set, because I know how important it is for your $60 seed, I'm going to give you the book free. Did you get that? You can get the $25 book or for $60, a $60 seed plus shipping and handling. I want to send you both the book absolutely free, my free gift to you when you request the full DVD set, we don't have CDs, only DVD set, and you must ask for the Louisville 
prophecy package. The Louisville prophecy package. And for your gift of $60 plus a few dollars shipping and handling, you'll receive both of these. Now listen to me. Let me share my heart because I'm rapidly out of time. So many of you responded to our summer special. And you literally, without your help, we would have gone off the air, literally, by now. And so I thank you for that helped. But now here we are. This is the most critical time of the year. As you, as you go out of the year and into the new year, and we're right here in this period of time, we definitely need to hear from every partner, every supporter, every viewer of God's news, so that we can make up everything that was lost during the summer months. We're right now at the most critical stage, and I need your help and your support. Listen, you're only going to get getting a few excerpts. That's all we're going to give you on the air, because there are things that I say. In fact, let me just tell you, I conclude this message on the global caliphate. The last five minutes, I just told my producer, I said, don't you dare put it on the air. I say some things <laughs> about Islam in America that go to the highest office of the land. And that's all I'm going to say. We will not put it on the air. The only way to hear it and see it is by getting these DVDs. They're not sold in bookstores. They're not sold in, in retail stores. The only way to get them is right here when you support me and stand with me. And you're not buying the tools, understand, you're not buying these things for your seed gift of $60 to help me. And let me just say this quickly. I know I say it a lot. Folks, not one dime comes to me. I'm not asking for me. Like Paul in the, in, in the New Testament, he says, I'm not asking for a gift for me. I'm asking for fruit that may abound to your account. Will you help me? You know, the Bible talks about helping a man of God in their hour of need. And I'm a man of God. And if you believe I am and you discern I am, and I'm not on TV to get rich or make money. I'm not on TV to be popular and famous. I'm not on TV for any other reason than to proclaim this end-time message. And if you discern that and you believe that, then will you stand with me now? I want to rush these two items to you before this year is out. That's only a few weeks. We must end this year in the black. Help me. That $60 seed, not me personally, we put every dollar of it right back into ministry to keep this voice alive. Lord, I pray right now for my partner and my friend as they stand with me, as they go to the phone, as they go to online right now, just godsnews.com, www.godsnews.com. Find the Louisville Prophecy Package. And both of these will be rushed to you. I'm all out of time. Lord, bless my partner and my friend as they stand with me. Till next week, I'm going to come back next week and we're going to talk about Jonathan Kahn and the Shemitah. I leave you with the words of Jesus. He said, Be ye therefore ready also, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh.